Hey, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I hope everyone enjoyed the, the, the band, enjoyed the tuba, because something doesn't feel New Orleans until you hear that tuba and that band outside, so it's great to have everyone here today. So I'm Terrell Boynton, I'm the director of the New Orleans Digital Transformation Center, and would like to invite you to join us on a journey of digital transformation and, and opening up this facility. It's great today to be joined by great supporters Governor John Bell Edwards and Mayor Latoya Cantrell, as well as DXC Technology Executive Vice President Jim Smith, as well as Frank Stewart, who is the Chairman and Steward of Capital and the owner of this great facility and the host for our services that will stand up as far as our digital transformation journey. We are also joined by Quentin Messer, as well as the GNO President and CEO Michael Heck, and Don Pearson, Secretary of State who has been a great supporter of us on this journey and enabling LED Fast Start uh, to move and advance digital transformation uh, journey forward here in New Orleans. Today we officially and proudly launched the DXC Digital Transformation Center. This could not have been accomplished without the support and the efforts of everyone that's here in this room. Most importantly, the ones on the stage and their supporting staff have enabled us to advance a digital transformation center from the steps of announcing it on the Superdome to where we are today. As I look out across this crowd, what I see was once strangers as we announced our journey and our vision to what we have today as I see friends and family that have joined together to help support not only the community, but the students that will thrive in this city as we advance digital technologies and we advance education with the partnerships with our higher education system. That support and that commitment comes from everyone in this room and everyone in this city, and each of you should be proud of it. So together, we're committed to a mission of enabling de uh, the development of talent, not only in New Orleans, but across the state of Louisiana. Technical opportunities for generations ahead, not today, but in the future. Our journey and our mission is to bring 2,000 plus jobs to the city of New Orleans, to enable the universities to advance the skill sets that enable technology to advance, not only for DXC, but also to enable our education system and our partners and community programs to succeed. I want to thank you for welcoming DXC Technology to this wonderful building and to your wonderful city. And as we kind of advance through our, our approach today and we talk about our journey, one of the key areas that you'll see is we want to open up our doors. We want to enable you to tour our facility on the 14th floor and understand what a digital transformation journey is. We want to engage with you, we want to have an open session, enjoy some hors d'oeuvres, and also enjoy that tuba that I so much enjoy. <laughs> so without any further discussion, no other announcements are needed, I have the pleasure of introducing to you our 56th Governor of Louisiana, Governor John Bell Edwards. The Governor... The governor served eight years as an Airborne Ranger on active duty and with the United States Army and commanded a rifle company in the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. In 2008, he was elected to the Louisiana House of Representatives from District 72, where he served for eight years until the voters of Louisiana elected him governor in November of 2015. Please welcome one of our great supporters, Governor Bill Edwards.
thank you. And what an exciting day today. And I want everyone just to take a moment, look around this room, look up here on this stage. This looks like Louisiana. This is what these types of announcements are supposed to look like, Mayor. I am so excited about what we're doing here. And this is not just about digital transformation as it relates to DXC. This is about transformation, period. Transformation of New Orleans, transformation of the great state of Louisiana into that bigger and brighter future that we always knew was possible. And I, I want to deviate from my script for just a moment in case you haven't heard. The mayor and I were on a phone call a little earlier with Ms. Gail Benson, and she told us that New Orleans in 2024 will host for the 11th time the Super Bowl right across the street. So, so this is a more exciting day for New Orleans than we could have imagined when this was scheduled just a few days ago. But it was actually six months ago that we were over at the Superdome on the ramp when we unveiled the news that DXC Technology had decided to come to New Orleans with 2,000 permanent jobs, another 2,200 or so indirect jobs. Now think about the impact that is going to have not just on New Orleans, but on this entire region, on our state. And in case some of you haven't heard it, I want to say it again and listen. This is the largest economic development win in our state's history measured in permanent direct jobs at one location and the salary average that will be paid. Right here, DXC Technology. So thank you very much, Carol and everyone else with DXC. And Frank, thank you so much. We, we didn't know where this expansion was going to happen in New Orleans. Uh, we had an idea, but you helped make it happen right here in what used to be the Freeport McMoran building. But I knew we were making progress when I flew in a couple of weeks ago and saw the DXC sign on this building. So thank you very much, Frank. We, we love having this building here. Now, I want to tell you what made this possible. And I want you to please relate it to what we're doing right now in Baton Rouge. Uh, first of all, we have a challenge, you all know it. But first and foremost, we have an opportunity to finally stabilize our great state and have a revenue and budget structure that will carry us into the future and allow us to continue down the road of increased prosperity and opportunity for all. But we have to stabilize and we have to support education and in particular, higher education. In this room right now, we have all of the systems of higher education in the state of Louisiana represented. We have LSU, we have Southern, you have the University of Louisiana system, we have the Louisiana Community and Technical College system, all of whom are an integral part in this announcement. Because DXE would not be in New Orleans, they would not be in Louisiana, but for the fact we committed to support higher education. So they knew when they invested their dollars here, we would be able to make sure they had the educated, the skilled, the trained workforce that they would need to be successful. Because we want as many of those 2,000 jobs as possible to be filled by our sons and daughters. And guess what? The demand for their services around the globe are increasing faster than even they had anticipated, which will give us more opportunities here to go beyond that 2,000 jobs, but only if we are educating people so that they can be hired, whether it's our community and technical colleges or our four-year universities. So listen to me. The budget that got produced by the Senate the other day, a $96 million cut to the higher education institutions, $80 million cut to TOPS, absolutely a non-starter. Those cuts will be catastrophic for our future. It is time to fix our budget. And we can do it and still give a $400 million tax break to the people of Louisiana. But it is the most important thing going on in our state in the next couple of weeks. And when we succeed, just watch what happens in Louisiana, all over the state. 
And I'm so excited about what's going to happen here in New Orleans as we continue to transform this city under the leadership of our new mayor, LaToya Cantrell. Thank you so much for your work. You know, as if we don't have enough to celebrate, the tricentennial of this great city, 300 years. Wow. The New York Times has made New Orleans the number one destination in the world in 2018. I don't know what took them so long to get there. I don't know what took them so long. We've known that all along. Let me tell you what truly excites me. I'm going to get back to higher education for just a moment. Most of the upfront money in order to land this deal with DXC Technologies is not money that the state of Louisiana is giving to DXC. It's actually $25 million over five years that we are going to give to higher education in Louisiana. So it is a direct investment in those institutions, but more importantly, an investment in our young people to make sure that whether they're going to Delgado or Southeastern or UNO or LSU or SUNO, wherever it is that they're going, that they have a direct path, not just to DXE Technologies, but to these types of jobs all across the state of Louisiana. That is the way to go forward. And it would not be possible but for the partnership between higher education, the state of Louisiana, the Louisiana Department of Economic Development, GNO Inc., DXE Technologies, all of the people who made this happen. This is how economic development is supposed to work. This is the best model out there. That's why I'm excited about it, to come down here, to make this announcement, to cut a ribbon, and just get you all to think about what this means if we do this every six months or so. <laughs> across, the, across the state of Louisiana, because we are going to transform this city, this region, and our state. I firmly believe that. Our best days are ahead of us. And this is just a sneak peek at what is to come if we will just stay on task. So I want to thank all of you for being here today, for joining in on this celebration. I want to ask you all to make sure that you are working with us to fix the situation in Baton Rouge. Once and for all, not piecemeal, not temporary. Let's fix it. Let's summon the courage to do what is necessary. You know, I would much rather be the governor who came in to preside over the largest budget surplus in our history, but I happen to come in to preside over the largest budget deficit. And when that happens, you have to make the tough decisions. They don't get easier because you delay. In fact, delay is worse. We finally have an opportunity to get it done in the next two weeks. So work with us. Join your prayers to mind for our country and for our state. Let's get it done. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Our next speaker is the first woman to represent the city of New Orleans in its 300-year history as chief executive and mayor. What I find interesting is we talk about tricentennials and 300 our target in our first year is hiring 300 employees out of our college and our student base. And it's, it, it's very, you know, it, it's very telling that 300 seems to be a growing number. You know, we have tricentennial, we have the first, you know, woman mayor in 300 years, and now we have DXC bringing 300 opportunities here in the first year. So without any other announcements or any other formalities, Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in offering a warm welcome to the Honorable LaToya Cantrell, Mayor of the City of New Orleans. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you so much. I am standing here as your mayor, but I am not standing alone. I would like to acknowledge our council president, Jason Williams. I saw our vice president, Helena Moreno. I did see Councilman Jared Brassett. Joe Geruso, it's so important that we acknowledge the city leadership who is here because we are committed in every way to ensuring that DXC not only cuts the ribbon but that you stay here for generations.
to come. We know that we are starting with 300 jobs, but by 2024, that's up to 2,000 jobs. And that 2024 mark just happens to be even when that Super Bowl 58 is coming. <laughs> so today is really a great day in the city of, of New Orleans. You know, we are definitely committed to educating our children, our adults, young adults here. The first council ever uh, in the history of the city of New Orleans allocated close to a million dollars to early childhood because we understand that we have to start with our babies as well as give opportunities as they matriculate through higher education. A city that has eight colleges and universities, that's an industry in and of itself. So we're going to make sure that we groom our young people to take advantage of these opportunities. New Orleans is number one in this country with growth in tech. We're number two in this country with women in tech. And I'm telling you, hey, we're gonna keep it rolling now. <laughs> but even more importantly, we have a city council and leadership there that is tied with me in ensuring that New Orleans truly does become a smart city. We're right on that, councilman. We're gonna to get to that 5G, so not just starting up so that we can continue to expand. We cannot be smart without it. So I'm just sharing with you that we are in this for the long haul. We have leadership in place to ensure that our people reach their full potential right here in this city. Your presence here is a testament to that. We have the New Orleans Chamber, the Business Council. We have the Regional Black Chamber of Commerce, the Collaborative, all who have been working together to make this day possible. So with you, I know the way is truly in our front. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership, LED, and more importantly, DXC, and you can't do it without the dollars. So Frank Stewart, man, we love you. All right. The next person I want to welcome to the stage is our Executive Vice President of Digital Transformation and Joint Ventures. His vision for DXC, as well as propelling us out of not only a regional local hub, but then to expand globally and support across 70 countries where DXC has a presence, enables us to expand our possibilities in digital transformation. Please welcome Jim Smith. So first, first off, I want to say thank you to everyone here. And obviously, I think this is a great occasion for DXC, but not only for that, for clearly the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana and everyone who has had a part in making this happen. So truly, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, what I'd like to do is extend the warm welcome of our president, CEO, and chairman, Mike Laurie. He couldn't be here today but he sends his warmest and deepest appreciations and thank yous for all of the support, the aligned vision, and frankly, the execution to get us here today. It's one thing to dream it, as it was on the steps of the Super Bowl, of the, uh, uh, <laughs> across the street. <laughs> However, it's another thing to actually make it happen. And that is the great thing about this. We're making it happen right here today. So thank you very much. Second, I want to spend some time just thanking what I heard here today, which is when I listened to Mayor Cantrell, Governor Edwards, you're spot on. A partnership between business and leaders is critically important. And when you bring the core piece, which is education, into that, that's what we are trying to do as a business. We need places and forward thinking which is just what you're doing to allow us to build our business with new skills, new capabilities, committed to a community that is very like-minded around that. And we're going to do that. And it's very exciting to be here to do that. So let me take a moment to tell you a little bit about what we're doing and what our vision is for the Digital Transformation Center. What will people be doing here? Why are we doing this? Well, quite simply, it's, it's very clear. It's about growth. The entire world's digitizing. Look what I'm reading my notes from today. The entire world's digitizing. 
And we need people and skills and new capabilities in our young professionals in order to be able to deliver that demand, not only locally, but to the U.S. and to the world. The people that will work here will have vital skills, skills of the future, skills of growth. And that's what this Digital Transformation Center is all about. Second, we're going to be doing great things for clients. In the end, clients and customers want to be more competitive in the world today. Their competition is all around them, doing all kinds of cool new things that we all benefit from. People need to build that stuff, imagine that stuff, and do that stuff. That's what the people here at the Digital Transformation will be doing, delivering next generation digital IT skills locally, regionally, and globally. Third, and critically important, this is a fabulous place, but innovation happens all over the globe. So I've had a responsibility from our chairman and CEO to build out digital across the globe, and this Digital Transformation Center is just one of those centers. It's an important and critical one, and the key is that it's connected to other centers that will be built throughout the world. And that innovation gets to flow back and forth, and it creates more opportunity, more growth, more jobs, and more prosperity. That's our vision for how digital transformation happens globally. And as the governor said, demand is incredible. And that's where higher education comes into play. Without the skills, Without the partnership with higher education, there's no possible way we could be successful at doing what we're going to do here with the Digital Transformation Center in New Orleans. So thank you to everyone who's driving that and giving us the capability to bring on new talent and skills into this vital center. And these people, as we ramp up, right, hopefully 2,000 and beyond, beyond that 2024 timeline, they're going to have the vital skills of the future. They're going to be leaders. They're going to be innovators. They're going to in embrace change with clients to make their businesses more competitive on the global stage. And they're going to do it from right here in the center. So thank you very much, everyone, for all of your commitment, your drive, your passion, your willingness to support us and take the lead and enabling us to be able to do something which we think is remarkable, not only for New Orleans, but for the state of Louisiana and all of its many people who will come here and work here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. So now I'd like to bring our final speaker, Mr. Frank Stewart. As Governor Edwards and Mayor Cantrell said, we couldn't be here without your support without your leadership and enabling a building to digitally transform and grow and develop. Um, please come to the stage as uh, Mr. Frank Stewart, as a chairman of the board and the Stewart Capital, uh, speaks to us and welcomes us to uh, his great and marvelous facility. I truly uh, thank you and thank all of you for being here today. This is a great day. Governor, Governor Edwards is a great leader of this state, and I have to say he said it very well. I'm the cleanup hitter, so I'm gonna be very short and brief. But I will tell you this, Mayor Cantrell, I know what you have in store for this city. It's gonna be a whole new energy in increase, and we're gonna find New Orleans back named the Queen City of the South. When I grew up, that's what was, New Orleans was referred to as a queen city of the South. We are truly privileged, very privileged, to have Jim Smith and his company, DXC, as a tenant in this building. And it took the cooperation of a lot of people to make it happen. The team is not only just you all, but all the people behind the scenes that helped put the space together. It took cooperation from Freeport. It took cooperation from all the other tenants in this building to be able to handle the fulfillment of the request of DXC. And I want to thank everybody who had a part in that team play. The two Michaels, uh, all I can say, Michael Hyken and Michael Siegel, 
played a major part in the negotiations of making this building possible. I will say I'm prejudiced and biased. I've been here a long time. Uh, I hate to tell you, but uh, too many years. Uh, I am prejudiced and biased because I think this location is the best location that anyone could have in the city of New Orleans. We're across the street from 5,000 parking places. We've got a heliport. You can fly in across the street. We've got all of the ins and outs, the ingress and egress of the location here so that you can come from the expressway. And I really, as I say, feel that the privilege I've had in acquiring this building, all I can say is, is something that the future will prove that this location right here across from the Superdome will be the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you again for being here. It's a privilege to be a landlord and to have a, a major principal tenant such as DXC. We welcome you, and we are going to be the Queen City of the South. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Uh, now is the time that we've been waiting for. We get to cut the ribbon, open up our facility, and then after we cut the ribbon, if everyone could proceed to the elevators and go directly to the 14th floor, um, we'll have an open discussion about digital transformation um, as well as uh, some refreshments. Um, so if the team would come up and we'll uh, remove the podium and cut the ribbon. Governor Edwards.